If you're wondering about yesterday, I'm sorry. I needed more time to get this review in. No excuses, right? All right, then. Let's do it. I'm Mega Man and G, and I welcome you to another Power Rangers Dino Fury episode review. Today, we talk about episode 10 of season 2, Losers Weepers. The next one's the last one, and then we gotta wait for the other half. So here's a deal. I'll provide a synopsis as well as some details. Let's get started then, shall we? Izzy and Aeon have a bike race through the forest, until an accident throws all that out the window. A blame game ensues until Aeon finds a briefcase full of cash. He then decides to go on a shopping spree, but all of this doesn't feel satisfactory. Meanwhile, Void Queen brings yet another Sporks monster to cause trouble for the Rangers. Thing is, this thing puts the Rangers in a serious predicament. How can they get out of it? And what about Aeon? Will he realize that money can't buy anyone happiness? Yeah, I'm kind of messed up on the synopsis, but you kind of get the idea. Another episode, another review. Like I said already earlier, this is the penultimate episode before the midseason finale. And it's an Aeon episode, surprisingly enough. In terms of the plot, Aeon finds a briefcase full of cash. Instead of sharing it, he decides to be selfish and spends it all on himself. He then realizes that it doesn't feel satisfactory. As for the subplot, the Rangers contend with a powerful Sporex, and in order to fight back, they need to bring out the big guns. Wow, I'm just not gonna I'm just gonna be like be blunt with this, but in terms of Aeon's story, side of the story, this is kind of reminding me on how familiar tropes on how someone would find money, spend it on whatever they want, and then feel bad that it doesn't satisfy them. It's predictable, yes, but in the case of this, I actually like how it was handled, especially since before all that, Aeon and Izzy find like some kind of collar. But Void Queen ends up getting it and it you and she uses it on a Sporex that ends up growing on her own. Mucus was the first, but she couldn't sustain it. As for the Sporex of the week, we have Frapnarok. Before I explain this, what I really liked about that Aeon bit was that when he was spending money, everything that he had was like in all gold. That's a nice touch right there. Back to the topic at hand, the Sporks of the Week, Frapnarok. It was a force to be reckoned with. So much so that it wrecked the Rangers and their Zords. It didn't waste any time and not even the Primal Smash Ultra Zord was enough. You know for a fact that Void Queen isn't playing around. She wants revenge against humanity, and she's willing to do whatever it takes. We even see Tarek trapped in a cage around the same chamber that she was in. It's bad. I know that for a fact, and I feel bad for Tarek, truly. All that hard work he did to save his wife, and now this happens. You also probably wonder what happened to Aeon. Yeah, I'm serious. I keep talking about the Aeon subplot a lot more, but... Thing is, for as much as I enjoyed it being a little too predictable, it wasn't until a chance encounter by Pop Pop, who appears by the way, that made him realize that money alone can't buy you happiness. It doesn't buy anyone happiness at all. But what he does next is insane. Basically, he gives away all the things that he bought to people that needed it. It's true selflessness right there, and it really brings out Aeon's character. And I like how Pop Pop was kind of the one that inspired him. He gave him a gold jacket and then it kind of snowballed from there. It was a little rush, but I really did like how Aeon realizes that all that spending wasn't satisfying to him. It was well done. I really, I really do like it. And it also made me appreciate Aeon more as a character. As for debuts, we have one that was hinted at for a while. It was hinted at back in Season 1, but now we finally get to see it here. The Primal Ultra Zord. Basically, you take the T-Rex Champion Zord, the Moza Razor Zord, and the Terra Free Zord, and combine all three together to create an Ultra Zord that's just way powerful. Not to mention, we finally get some backstory on what really happened millions of years ago, when Zato, Aeon, and his Ranger team used the Primal Ultra Zord to take out all the Sporex. It was not pretty. It went critical, and the Zord pretty much exploded. Aeon and Zato were the only survivors. The rest of the team, not so lucky. The fact that it was hinted at, and now we finally see it all unfold, was pretty something. We, like, we come full circle with this. It wasn't pretty. 
I'm happy that we finally know what happened on that day. But I feel that there's a lot more to it than that. The best part for me personally was how the Rangers were able to figure out how to keep it stabilized without causing it to go kaboom. And yeah, like I said, the Primal Ultrazor doesn't play around. It delivered in terms of its firepower, and it took down Frapnarok with ease. Considering that they sent it all the way up to space, fired a blast, and wiped it out. It was a, it's a powerful weapon that will hopefully help the Rangers against Void Queen. Really something. I mean, you can't have Power Rangers without some kind of Ultra Zord. They have like the, this is the second Ultra Zord they have. And I wouldn't be surprised if we end up getting another later on. Speaking of which, the ending was a satisfying one. Aeon was able to set things right with Izzy. And the best part, he got her a new bike. Because in the, in the early bits of the episode, they had a race through the forest. And an accident caused Izzy to have her bike broken. I'm serious. That, it, that's how it all began, an accident. I like how it was settled here. And it was a pretty satisfying ending seeing the two bike ride together. Overall, the ending was a great one. I really enjoyed it. And it was a really good one with a nice life lesson to boot. I can't believe I actually mentioned that. I give this a 9 out of 10 and I highly recommend it. You should check the episode out if you can. It's on Netflix. You should watch it. I'm, I'm serious. I really am looking forward to what the rest of the season will bring. My bigger question is what happens afterwards. I'll be talking about that when I cover everything. That's going to be it for this review. There's only one more episode review, and then I'll be done. I'm sorry if you're seeing all of it like this, but my laptop is still in repairs. I need time. Hopefully, I'm going to find out from HP what's the situation and hopefully stuff like that doesn't happen again. If not, I don't know what to do. So yeah, if you enjoyed, hit the like button. It means a lot. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the bell. I will see you next time. This is Mega Man NG signing off. Peace out. Ryu's so cool.